planning. Okay, so welcome everyone to this amazing, uh, wonderful session going to be. And uh, thank you everyone for joining, of course. My name is Shibam Dhar and I work as developer advocate at Drona HQ. And uh, today we are going to build an awesome project, a full-fledged uh, app uh, using Drona HQ as well as MariaDB, which will be an appointment app and it will have all the functionalities to insert data and view and much more. And uh, from MariaDB, we have a special guest, Mr. Alejandro, and soon... Uh, Hi, Andrew. How are you? Hello, Jibam. Yeah, I'm good. How are you? Good. So uh, I'm I'm awesome. Buddy. I'm very awesome. I'm very much excited. So before we move on, just let me give a quick introduction for our special guest, of course. So Alejandro uh, is a like a well-experienced and commendable software engineer, published book, I must say, and as an award winner. And now he is working as a devil relation engineer at MariaDB. And today he is here with us to uh, share his knowledge, share his best practices to create database and MariaDB and uh, yes, to, to most more diversify the things. We will first, uh, this whole session will have the two session, uh, two parts. The first part where Alejandro will explain that uh, how to create database and what are the best practices. And uh, since our apps has a, a little bit about analytics also, so he will uh, also share a bit about column store and much more. And in the next part, I will uh, start from the front end and create the full fledged app of client and uh, clinic appointment where people can insert their events and see them in the calendar view. And uh, yes, so uh, moving on to, so Cal and how are you again? So how you want to go ahead with this? Let, uh, you are me, let me unmute myself first. <laughs> yes. <laughs> the problem of these uh, centuries, right? Uh, no, not uh, yeah, I guess uh, we are going to have a couple of uh, sections here. So we we'll first uh, yes. show a bit of theory, then we'll get into the practice. And we're going to divide this first, the back end, which is the database, yes. then the front end, which is uh, yes. Zona HQ. So really looking forward to, to, to your part of how uh, easy it is to create a front end for a for a MariaDB database. Right. So uh, what about, uh, let's show them the uh, app demo first, then we can yep. start, right? What about it? Okay, sure. Just give me a second. Let me share my screen. Okay. So I guess my, yes, my screen is visible. So this is the final app, which we are going to build. This is like a full-fledged uh, appointment. This is a kind of view where if you click on uh, an appointment, you can see the details, this number and the reason. And also if you click on delete, it will delete the event. And uh, just let me move this side. And on a new event link, you can also insert a new appointment, which on click of a submit button, it will be showcased in this particular calendar view. And the next part we have our reports. So reports are basically about uh, what are the analysis of the whole database, like at which time or how, what is the status is, or what are the types of appointment. So yes, that was the uh, demo. So, okay. And we're good to go, I think. So this is what we are going to build today using MariaDB and Dona HQ. All right, so maybe let me share my screen if I can find the option here. Absolutely. Just one second. Uh, I don't know why I didn't see it. Uh... Give me help or just beside the chat. Is it the like uh, not available or like uh, some security is there? Uh, well, I, for some reason, I didn't see the option to uh, share my screen. Let me check in the menu here though. Yeah, so I have, okay, here is, it was, oh, I resized the window and then the chair screen button appeared on the 
yes on the like Zoom a... client yes. case, yeah. that's that's strange okay well i think uh -huh. it's gonna work now cool okay. let me share my screen yes and let me reset some stuff here because now it got very messy over here uh we're just gonna open our chat in case uh something happened okay so cool um so this is the first part of this uh, uh kind of a demo that we're gonna do so i have titled yes. this already for low code apps so my intention is to show um why MariaDB is uh, one of the best, if not the best option for low code platforms such as Brown HQ, which offers a very good integration with uh, MariaDB. So before that, um, I'm just gonna quickly say that I'm a software engineer. I published uh, these uh, three books about software development and I work in developer relations at, at MariaDB. But let me start with uh, the history of MariaDB. And it's gonna be really brief because uh, uh, it's a very intricate uh, story. Um, we have a better talk about it if you're curious at MariaDB.com. If you go to the resources or webinars somewhere in the page, you'll find the evolution of MariaDB where I explain much more about this if you're interested. And so for that, I'm gonna use this timeline, okay? This is the uh, timeline of the history of databases since 1960s to today, all right? And MariaDB was born around here in 2009. And it was a fork, or it is still obviously a fork of MySQL. So it, it, they copied the code of MySQL, which is another very, very, very popular database, relational database. And uh, the initial intention was to be a drop-in replacement for MySQL. Now, that back then, the first release was uh, MariaDB 5.1.38. Uh, we are in 11.2, I don't remember, 11, 11 series. So it's been a long ride and, uh, and uh, projects have diverged. So MariaDB has uh, features that MySQL doesn't have um, and some improvements. It is open source. It's a... Uh, um, release under the GPL, so that ensures that the MariaDB server is going to be open and free for everybody. Now, uh, MariaDB started to gain a popularity very, very quickly in the next years, and it became the default database in most Linux, uh, Linux uh, distributions. Uh, the MariaDB Foundation uh, was um, created also to kind of uh, protect these and to drive the uh, development of the MariaDB server and to drive innovation and adoption and this kind of stuff. Uh, also, the MariaDB Corporation, now it's called PLC, uh, was uh, created to offer services around the free and open source MariaDB server, but not only services, also technologies. So, oh, let me get this over here. Where was this? Oh, sorry. Maybe I made a mistake here with the Zoom and, and didn't grant somebody joining our Zoom meeting. I apologize if that was the case. Well, let's move on. Um, but I was saying also, the MariaDB PLC or a corporation was called before, creates uh, uh, open source uh, products such as uh, faster connectors or drivers for programming languages such as, uh, such as Java, um, Node.js with JavaScript and uh, Python and C++. Mm. Faster, I mean here, faster than those that exist for MySQL. Also additional storage engines, which is what we are gonna kind of highlight uh, from the technical side later and something called MariaDB Enterprise. So let me just uh, say something about this, which is, uh, I call it enterprise subscription, which is what you should use if you are using MariaDB and want to go to production. And this is very marketing stuff, experience restful nights, but the, the message is that um, the, the database is, is gonna be there available all the time. And it includes something called the MariaDB Enterprise Server that has um, um, kind of a wider maintenance uh, window compared to the uh, community server. It has features such as uh, non-blocking backups. So you can take a backup from the production database without stopping, for example, your, your Drona HQ application. Uh, it has enterprise audit if, if you have to comply with uh, certifications and these kind of things, uh, same with security. And this one, Max Scale, which is super cool. Uh, in, in my opinion, the best uh, database proxy in the market. I haven't seen one better. If somebody hearing me saying this, and, and and if you know a better one, let me know. I would be so curious to to see it. This is fantastic. 
uh, it allows you basically to scale your database to and that's like to scale vertical or, or vertically or horizontally like adding more machines to get more power as your database uh, grows high availability and even enables NoSQL in MariaDB I'm not going to talk too much about it you can find a whole lot of videos here so take a screenshot of this uh, screen right now or take a photo with your phone and then you can arrive to this channel where we have plenty of videos about MariaDB Enterprise, MariaDB Community, databases in general, everything. Uh, so subscribe if you like these uh, kind of content. All right, so uh, this is something uh, that's always interesting to know. So cool, but who is actually using uh, uh, this thing? So here are some notable contributors. I don't think I have to say anything about these things. You recognize them, they're very well established. Uh, everywhere and uh, uh, there are uh, huge uh, companies. Some notable users that I wanted to show, although there are many, 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 many uh, big and small are these. Uh, Wikipedia, for example, when you are reading a Wikipedia article, you are seeing data stored in MariaDB. Samsung, if you have a Samsung device and you are logging into the, your uh, networks, you are using MariaDB. DBS, one of the uh, largest uh, banks in Asia. They migrated from Oracle to MariaDB. Mm, they have many, many MariaDB servers. Uh, Nokia Red Hat. Uh, well, you get you get the idea. Seventy-five percent uh, of the Fortune 500 use MariaDB, so most of them are using MariaDB in production. And it has more than one billion downloads on Docker Hub. So this is something that's being in use. It's, uh, uh, proven, it has uh, history, it's under uh, development every day with a team of uh, developers, a brilliant mind uh, building this software. Now, let's get a bit more technical now and talk about storage engines, which is, uh, in my opinion, one of the most interesting features in MariaDB. And there are many, many storage engines. This is a cloud of terms where each word there is a name of, is the name of a storage engine. So for example, you see, you know, DB in a corner there, that's what you are gonna use most of the time. And, and if you have used MySQL or MariaDB, you have maybe encountered the word, the term, you know, DB. Um, this is for transactional workloads, like where to store your data, everyday data. That's what you're going to use. Right in the middle, we see column store, ironically, in a horizontal way. Column store uh, stores data vertically. So the um, data related to one column is closer to each other. So it optimizes uh, data locality. So, so queries that operate on a column are going to be much faster because if it's like a row, then you have to go through all these things to get to the next row and so forth. So it's very fast for uh, reports so or, or something we call analytical queries. And we're going to use those two, InnoDB and a column store. Um, but as you can see, there are many others. But what exactly is a, a storage engine in MariaDB? So let's suppose this is a MariaDB server. Okay, so I install this in a machine. Now I have the MariaDB server. Inside this server, there is something called the uh, SQL or SQL. API and something like Drona would uh, Drona HQ would connect or send SQL queries to this API mm, through the connectors that, that MariaDB uh, uh, creates. Again, the connectors are like for Java and, and Python and C++. In fact, Drona HQ uses the official Node.js connector for MariaDB, so you can use all the power of MariaDB with uh, from from your uh, Drona HQ applications, which is really really cool. Um, then this, this uh, SQL sentences, queries or inserts or deletes or uh, updates are sent to a storage engine API that in turn sends the, the uh, for example, the query to, or the insert to one of the um, storage engines. So as you can see in the same MariaDB server, there are several storage engines and these are pluggable. You can install them or uninstall them. I think by default, it comes with seven or eight uh, storage engines. When you install MariaDB, these are uh, some of the, the ones that are available. Again, we're going to use InnoDB, which is for general purpose when you have a mixed read write workload. So, so many reads, many writes, that's the combination is more or less similar. InnoDB is the one that you want to use. Uh, and column store next to it, it stores, again, data in a columnar fashion. It's good for analytics or, or report generation. But you have some others that you can read out. Uh, I like, for example, the uh, uh, Spider that, uh, engine that allows you to facilitate doing uh, data charting, which is dividing the data in a huge table and, and putting it in several different machines to, to scale out. Mm. Uh, 
And this is the idea. Now, uh, these uh, uh, storage engines, they just read data to the disk and, and, uh, and um, or from the disk and write it uh, to, to, to disk. So each table in this, in this MariaDB server can be associated to use one of those. So you can have a combination. So let me show you that. And here I'm going to get, uh, I know we are talking about low code, but I, but I have to show you a little bit of code this time. If this is SQL, it's going to be very easy. Basically, we're creating, we're telling the database with this code to create a table call, called uh, comments. And uh, let's suppose that we expect tons, tons of, of comments. So we define some columns for this uh, table, right? So the contents, maybe who did it, the, the time, and so forth. And then because we expect so many uh, comments, this is a right heavy uh, workload. So we say engine equals my rocks done. This is now optimized for write heavy workloads. In fact, MyRox was created uh, initially many years ago by Facebook to handle this same use case right here. Now in the same database, then we want to create another, another table for storing categories of products or whatever it is that we are dealing with. And this, this table uh, actually uh, never changes or it, change, it changes every 10 years or, or, or I don't know. We can pick another engine. I'm picking, uh, probably you would pick InnoDB here, to be honest, but I'm showing Aria. So, so to, to, remind you, to remind you that there are many different uh, storage engines. Now, the cool thing here is that we can create a, a SQL query that selects all the columns from comments, which is the one of the tables there, and join or mix with categories, and then uh, kind of add a, a filter to it with a where clause here in SQL. And now we're combining in the same SQL query to database, um, to storage engines in MariaDB. So this allows, so also in short, this is, uh, this allows you to do cross engine queries. So one single query with several engines and MariaDB is gonna pick uh, the right one and, and take advantage of it. That's pretty cool. Now let's get more practical now. Uh, and I'm gonna show you what I prepared for this demo. So what I did is, well, at first I created, and I went to Amazon Web Services and created an EC2 instance. This is simply a computer somewhere, right? Uh, this is in the cloud. The cloud is just somebody else's computer. So I got a computer somewhere, it has Linux, and then I installed there. I, I logged in there in this machine in the cloud from here, from this office, and installed MariaDB server with a set of commands. There are many ways to install MariaDB. You can do it with Docker. We can deploy it to Kubernetes. Um, you can install it uh, on bare metal too with, uh, through a binary installers or your package manager of uh, that, that your operating system uh, handles on Windows, on Linux, on, on Mac as well, okay? In my case, this is what I did because uh, we wanted to share this database with uh, with, with uh, Chibum so that he can connect to it. And then after that, I created, first I created this database inside this server. This is the, the, the gray one is the server. Now this green one is, a database, so it's a set of tables. In MariaDB, uh, it, it's called databases. In other databases, it's called a schema. But MariaDB also supports the, the term schema, even the SQL, it's pretty cool. And I like it, I kind of like to say schema from time to time, or actually, I think I prefer the concept of schema, uh, but in MariaDB, it's called database. So I created the first one, clinic, and inside this uh, database or schema, I have two uh, tables, one to manage, um, doctors, information about doctors in a clinic, and one table to manage uh, appointments that people make with these uh, doctors. And notice that both of these are using the InnoDB storage engine, okay? Then I created another one called Analytics, and I created a table with the same name, appointments, but I'm using column store here, okay? And the data is being replicated somehow. I'm not gonna go through the details of these, um, this is not necessary. I mean, I wouldn't do it like this in production, really, in one server. I would probably have a separate server with the analytics uh, database in it, so it can grow by itself uh, with uh, billions of, of, of rows, if necessary. And MariaDB column store can handle that very easily. In fact, the more it grows, the more you see the, the gain in performance with column store. Uh, the point is that just imagine that the, the, the data is being copied Maybe it's like after each insert, maybe it's in a batch processing, maybe it's some ETL, whatever it doesn't matter, it's not the point here. Each use case is different. These two tables, they have the same name and also the same 
um, the same uh, data, all right? Uh, it's just that it's two different tables, one in one schema and one in another schema, all right? So that's what I have set up here. Also, I inserted 4 million rows or something like that just to make it more uh, credible. Uh, which is not really a lot. I mean, like probably in five years, a clinic like this would get this number of rows in some tables. Plus this is very simplistic. The database for an actual clinic would be much, much uh, uh, complex, but we want to keep this simple so that you don't have to, we don't have to get into details on how clinics operate and business rules and all that. Hmm. This is uh, the idea. So let me show you now uh, the database. I'm going to use something called dbgate, which is a, uh, a free uh, SQL client that uh, has compatibility with um, MariaDB. And I created a, this is a, a connection to a database, the one that I just showed you in the slides. Uh, so it's a MariaDB database. This is where, this is the host name, right? It could be an IP address of some computer somewhere. Port, user, I called it user, and the password, it's already encrypted here. So this is what you will get from your IT department or maybe your database administrator, you get these parameters or or if you are doing it yourself, then you get that from the, your cloud provider or if even you're going further then, then you know where the, the machine is, where you installed uh, MariaDB because you control that machine. So you get this this data, that's like the, the endpoint where the database is and the credentials to connect to it. So that's what I have here. Now I have, this is something that MRDB uh, generates kind of, um, it's kind of virtual if I remember correctly. So it's just information, metadata about the whole database. Uh, but these are the ones that I created. Remember the schemas or databases that I was talking about. So let's go with the clinic. If I click this, you see that there are the two tables. And if I go to analytics, I see just uh, one table. Now dbgate is showing me uh, the wrong uh, count here for some reason, but trust me, it has uh, mm, uh, around um, three or 4 million uh, rows. Now, let me show you, Doctors has only, uh, actually this uh, shows a bit uh, better estimate. This is still an estimate. Uh, I think it's even more than that. So Doctors, we have ID, an integer, and name is just kind of a, a, a string characters. Let me order these sort of something. You have a bunch of functionality here. So we have IDs one, two, three, and one is John, two is Jane, and three is Maria. This is the three doctors that are managing all these three million appointments. <laughs> A bit funny, but uh, well, for simplicity, we kept it like that. And um, the doctors, let's see a bit of the data of in the appointments. Obviously, this is not retrieving all the three, three or four million. This is showing um, a page maybe in that. So we have an ID also for an appointment, the name of the patient. And this is a dummy data auto-generated with some script that I created in Python and uh, simulated data, right? So it's a bit boring, but uh, but you have information about the, the, the person that's gonna take the appointment or who has the appointment. And then also information about the the appointment itself. I know, don't, don't judge me too much here. I know this is not normalized. This is not even in the third uh, normal form. We should have created another table, but we wanted to keep this very, very simple uh, and, and and show just two, two tables. And so that's what we kept it that way. This should be in a different table and probably other data as well. That's the process called normalization, by the way. And there are many uh, uh, normal forms. It's a, it's a whole process that you can follow to, to kind of uh, optimize how you store the database to avoid duplication of data and, and anomal anomalities when you insert, delete, and update data. Okay, and then you have the assigned doctor. This is uh, what I wanted to show you also. And it's an integer. Now, it, DB gets pretty cool and it goes ahead and shows something more. But if I try to edit one of these, so for example, this, it's actually an integer only. That's where I'm storing. So this appointment, it's by doctor ID number two. So if we go here, there's a foreign key, it's called. It's number two. So that, that would be Jane. Now, uh, DB gets pretty cool and shows Jane here already. Mm. So that's the idea of the database. Now, let me show you some other cool things that you can do here, which I think it's very relevant to, to folks using uh, low-code platforms. You can do a bunch of things here. So for example, we can create a new ER diagram to understand the database at, uh, uh, at this level. So now you know that the, the appointments uh, is uh, kind of uh, is pointing, each row in the appointments table is pointing to one doctor. So you can do, and you can drop all the, the uh, the um, tables here to this canvas and it's going to generate the uh, schema, the ER entity relational relation diagram. You can also 
do uh, performer queries without having to write type any SQL. So let's do that. So let's say we want to know the number of appointments each doctor has. So let's drop those two and it detects that there is a, 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 a foreign key. Remember that I mentioned that already. So this is gonna point to one of the, um, the doctors. So we have that. And let's say we have, we want the doctor name. So it's gonna appear here. So let's say this is the doctor. And we're gonna group by that by doctor, because we want to calculate the number of uh, appointments that this uh, each doctor has. So we need to group by that, and we can even sort uh, ascending. And then we are gonna sh we are gonna count the number of IDs, let's say, for each doctor. So now we say aggregate function, and you can have uh, several. So let's say count. So how many IDs each doctor, because we we grouped, has this. And we should be able, I believe, well, we can give it these names. So for example, count and then execute. And I'm operating on this clinic database. So it took uh, like three seconds, but here you see um, the uh, amazing number of appointments that each of these doctors, uh, super doctors have had in the history of this database. Very impressive. Uh, <laughs> you can also, uh, uh, Right, edit the, the the query. Actually, I can just click this button and it opens this. I don't like this at all, so I'm gonna go ahead and probably, uh, if I can, let me just if if I can do it quickly. I'll skip. Okay, I was able to find it. There you go. So here, this is equivalent to clean clinic dot appointments, which is the name of the, the the full name of the table because this is in bold font. I don't know if you can see it, but it's in bold. That means it's active. So if I don't specify, that's the default schema, but it's equivalent to that. Now, remember that, okay, let's run it again. So it kind of takes a bit, and this would be the same in any other relational database, by the way. This is not that MariaDB is slow or anything. Uh, remember, we have uh, plenty of, of rows there. It would be the same with any other database. Now with column store, which is in the analytics um, schema, it should take less. Let's see, well, it took one second this time. So it's it's uh it's an improvement even when we are not we are not even handling a lot of data to be honest, and and it, you can see already the improvement. Uh, so that's I guess uh, what I wanted to show you from the MariaDB uh, side. There are many more uh, things that you can explore here. This I installed it in my computer, then I connected to it and explored these things. Um, so. I think that's what I wanted to show you. I'm saying thank you here, but I'm gonna stick around uh, in case you want to uh, screenshot this thing or take a photo to contact me later. But but uh, I'm gonna uh, um, um, give back to you, uh, Chibam, so we can uh, see the UI on top. Okay, later. awesome, awesome. I mean, I mean, totally. Uh, this slide is like a treasure. I mean, you just get to learn about everything from like very history to what type of uh, database you actually want. But guys, uh, rest assured, no matter whether there are 4 million data or not, we will be uh, showcasing in this uh, webinar for Endo as well as column store both. Okay, cool. so cool. I think maybe we should proceed with the main uh, application then. Okay, yep. just let me share my screen. Okay. So when I, uh, now I'm on my studio Drona HQ account and, uh, I've created a blank slate. You can see it is a builder view and here I have added just few screens with a minimum of details, but I will be showing you the very, uh, important parts and how to build uh, the calendar from very scratch, but moving on, uh, like before moving forward, first thing first, we need to connect to our MariaDB database. Now for this, uh, the configuration, I will be showing you for an endo engine and right here in the connectors, you can see that there are different types of options available for databases as well as APIs. You can choose from uh, as per your own uh, preference. And in case if you don't have any such of REST API, you can just simply go to simple REST API and connect to it. But we have a dedicated connector for MariaDB and we are going to connect that. Let me fetch few details and I have them saved with you. But, uh, just... 
So these are the the uh, um, connection parameters to the yes the database. yes absolutely yeah. so these are the connection parameters which I am trying to fill in case if you have a connection string you can do it from here just simply paste the connection string next we have also option for AWS in, uh, import in case uh, you have an access ID or a secret access key but we are going to use in this a simple uh, hard and fast V the drone HQ and then password okay. Let me give it a name. So, let's do a test connection. Okay, connection is successful. That's great. Let's save it. Now, uh, the con uh, connected configuration is done. You can add your queries from right here also. Like, uh, let me just show you how it is done. So in case if you want to get all the details and just want to see what is in the schema. Uh, so I have a schema clinic, which I'll be using for this particular application. So let me show you the details first. So this is our query builder and the query name. You simply write your query and you can even ask AI. So, okay, I, I don't want to ask AI for a single uh, select star form. But in case if you have uh, a different types of uh, filters or you want to, as uh, Alejandro mentioned, that you wear clause and much more. So that thing, you can get a help from your AI or two. So let's click clinic. Let me test run. So this is the database I will be using for my application. And it has all these attributes. Okay. So moving forward, uh, let me get here, connect an ID. So I'm just doing a quick refresh because uh, I just create uh, added the con connector. So I want it to be reflected in this particular sc screen as well. Now, so in the screen, I want uh, control and that is calendar. Where's calendar? Here's again. Just a simply drag and drop. You have the calendar UI in front of you. So in this, uh, the first step is to uh, populate the data inside this calendar control. So we'll go to his data bind section. And uh, right here, you can see that there are different formats you can add, uh, like JS, you can use an SQL wave, FX, but uh, we'll be using the connector. So under quick select, I'll click on connector query. All right, now select category. So I'll just search. Where is here is the clinic table. So I had to refresh there also, I guess. Okay. Now here I want all the data. So get all, get all, everything. Just let me get a bit bigger. So right here, carry. Same thing. Select star from and my schema. Let's do a test. Okay, it's giving me all the details. It uh, the data has been truncated. Okay, so there are 43 details, not 4 million, but 43 there details. So it is now showing me a truncated view. Now, if I save it here, uh, it should like provide me all the details in the data uh, as the database has been faced. But I want to do a, diff a little bit of transformation now. The reason behind is that uh, the calendar control supports uh, date format, which includes date plus time. Now, if you see in a raw uh, response, it is uh, date different and time differently. Okay. So it's just a use case to make you understand that how transformation can help you with different use cases and wherever you are facing any problems and you want to make some tweaks uh, before uh, showcasing it uh, into your platform. So what I'll do, I'll write a JavaScript uh, code. Let me fetch it. Of course, I'll uh, provide a quick explanation too. So uh, what happening is that this data has all the details which uh, which I'm seeing in my raw response, and it is iterating through each one of them and checking whether uh, the hour and 
with it's checking its time as well as the date and using moment.js it is a library a javascript library function and uh, yes we have already installed few of the javascript library functions you can see from supported libraries like we have underscore.js moment js queries and much more so in this i am using moment.js and uh, you can see that it is combining the date as well as time and also adding a 30 minutes so why is it adding a 30 minutes uh, maybe we'll say it in the view is id let's do uh let me just run this and uh, if i can interrupt you for for a second uh, yes this, absolutely this this uh, uh the best place to do this transformation is the database but uh, we didn't do it that way so that mm -hmm. we can we can see these uh, cool functionality in uh, in drone ice cube yes yes but you should yes, do absolutely. always do always do this in the database it's the best place the fastest to do transformations uh, that's the yes that's the best practice but yep. it's also a functionality which i wanted to like you know put forward with the people yep. who are joined here because sometimes it happen that uh, you want to have a different uh, you have a boolean okay expression but you don't want to show a boolean expression it isn't zero and one in your database but in yeah, case you, if it's yeah, a but zero you can still transform yeah. it to yes, yes in, in exactly. the database yeah there are yes. there are edge cases where it's going to be difficult so it's good that 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 we know that it's possible with your own hq to further as data when necessary, especially when you have to use a third party uh, uh, system. But uh, yeah, yeah, sorry about yes. interruption. <laughs> no problem. Actually, it's good. Like uh, with the interaction of uh, the people will understand that exact crux of uh, doing this behind. So, yeah, so just to see uh, the raw response is here and it is ends on app appointment notes. But here you can see that we have the start date time as well as end date time. Well and good. So let's do test and see. So, what will happen? Uh, I guess. It will show me all the details on the calendar. Let's wait. Just processing. Okay. So let's close it. Something happened. Please select column for title started. Okay. Obviously. Now, in uh, what happened that all the attributes we have uh, collected from our database, now calendars are, needs to understand that where to put where. So in the title, let's say I want to showcase I have all these attributes. You can see that uh, these all attributes are coming from the DB itself. Nothing, no one, uh, and here is the assigned doctor. So the title I want to give assigned doctor, uh, let's the body be name, start date. Here you can see the start date time attribute has been added. And I'll do end. Voila. You have the title provided by the assigned doctor and the start date is given right there. So, okay. Okay, uh, one thing more, I want to open detailed view on click. So let's check, let's do a quick preview. I mean, first step, okay. Uh, we have our data in front of me. Good, that's good. So uh, what happens if I just click on it? Let's say, uh, let's go next month, January 1st. On 1st of January, someone has an appointment and these are all his details, which is good. But uh, there is something like with the visibility, like, I mean, uh, date of birth, I don't want this part, right? So these are some of the formatting which we can do. Let me show you. It's very interesting to be honest. Uh, in the data section, if you just go here and format data, you have all the column names, right? So let's say date of birth. So what is it? It's just simply a date. So I'll go here. Now, if I just click on data format, I have all these options. So let's just keep it for ISO for, let's see. And uh, appointment date. Okay, let's make it date. Okay. Now what else? For a better, uh, you know, viewing purpose, let's add some of the tags. Uh, what tags do I want? I want for a reason, appointment reason, okay. So appointment reason will have a single tag. Now single tag and multiple tag uh, is very much uh, useful when you are using a, a table grid format. So tingle, single tag, if I go to its format options, I can add options. So this will help to view the options as a very uh, dedicated color, you can say. Let me show. Uh, first thing I want to get for consultation, you see. That's not a very good color. Okay, that's a good color. Now I want what else we have follow up. Okay. Or what else reason? Uh, we have reason for preventive. 
the blue. Okay, that's the uh, chronic. Finally, chronic. Like chronic sounds dangerous, so let it be red only. Oh, yes, that's right. <laughs> Save and close. I think uh, we can give tax to our doctors also. Uh, assigned doctor, let's give it a single tag. And in this database, uh, I have only two doctors. Yes, 43. Oh, man. Doctor Dr. Gupta. Okay. Let's see what happens. Uh, I'll do a preview quickly and uh, click on any detail. Here it is. So you can see uh, the format of date has been changed. The appointment date has been also been changed and appointment reason and assigned doctor has given as a with a colorful uh, layout with a UI with a this is using a single tag. Okay. So this was our first page. The very beginning of our calendar view. Next. So uh, next, what I want is that on click of new event, I want to add new details of a new appointment, right? But uh, I want to do it from a different screen. So what I'll do, I actually have a list of screens. Uh, you can see right here uh, inside that I have one, two screen of calendar and analysis and one of for form and one other for menu. So we'll go uh, to one by one uh just after this so let's click on new schedule so what i want nothing just to navigate to the other form part so what i'll be doing is i will be using a form to get all the user inputs so click here here is my form so, okay 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 now what else do we want here? Okay, I want to delete an event, uh, an appointment also. So what I can do, I can add an action, but before that I have to mention an action. So right here in the, you can see that under action section, if I just toggle it on, click here, let's say delete. I have an icon feature also. And if I just click here, delete, okay. This is a cool icon. Let's click here. Till it should be red. Okay. Okay. Close detail view on click. Okay. 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 So we have delete. If I just click it. Okay. Now the next part is for its action, right? So what I'll do. The action uh, in the action, you can see it is the action number one. Now I'll go here. I'll go to the events and select action click number one. So first thing first, what I'll do. Search for server side action. Ah, uh, where is it? Okay. Linux, here is it. Now server side action. We don't, we haven't added any queries of yet, but uh, uh, let me see. Just to give me a second. Yes, I'll just click on add query and it has opened me the MariaDB query builder. So delete data. I want to sing, delete a single data on click of delete action. So it's like a very simple. Oh. Cool. So what is uh, happening here? Uh, delete from clinic. Clinic is the database or uh, of course the schema and where ID is equal to Curly braces. So curly braces, uh, if you are aware, that's well and good, but curly braces are useful to provide variables. Now, if I just, if I just written like one or two or three, it will be not be a, a dynamic one. Yeah. So I cannot use it in a dynamic way in my application to make it more dynamic is, is, uh, instead of static data, so I'm making it variable. So to practice out, let's say 45, I think, are there any? Okay. 
that's an active status see if okay the query is saved now let, let's click on continue here is the query now all is asking that in this action when you click in the particular button what do you want in the id well and good it's very simple i'll go you can simply write here as calendar but uh, just to show you that you can use from here so i want details on the control now in control i have uh, calendar control right let's just click here i'll see calendar control calendar id so i want id calendar dot id if i hover over it you can see it's showing one so at the moment it is uh like you can say pointing towards the first id but okay let's say continue and finish next on success let's show a toast delete it okay this one more thing i want to add is that uh, as i remembered i've used query to populate all the data like uh, get all right but what if i uh, you know delete a data I, I want to rerun the query again so how will you do it we have uh, again an on screen action it's like very simple just search run run data queries here is it get all continue finish okay i think this should do so let's try deleting some okay okay so where should we delete from i think first uh, one okay so let's click on delete perfect it's deleted you can see one more thing we have logs now connector logs is like a you know you can say a companion for you to debug uh, not exactly debug to understand how the requests are going on like you can see i have all these statuses like 200 200 type uh let me just like uh open this up and the very important part of this thing is you will be uh able to understand at which part what is the initiator what is the type going on whether it's a data type whether it's an action going on and also timeline like how much time is take and watch list of course this is much more into like to understand the dependencies between the connectors as well as uh, the controls. So well and good. The data has been deleted. Awesome. Now moving on to second part, which is inserting new data. Okay. So I have this uh, good looking form in front of me, which has several uh, controls. And to be honest, it's like basic, very basic controls. It's like text inputs. Uh, you can see there as like featured controls. If I just delete here in the under featured controls, these are the controls which I'm actually using like text input number. This is also in text input, which is uh, like, you know, you can go to its property section and determine its input type. So in case uh, the user is not uh, providing a proper uh, in uh, like format for a Gmail or email ID, it will show an uh, it will show an error like okay it is not a proper ID. Awesome. Okay, but let's me add few other things. Drop down. Now drop down. We'll have this. Okay. I want another drop down. Okay, right. so these drop downs will be used to uh, get the uh, options for appointment reason as well as doctor. So let me actually give them a name. So appointment. I think I forgot spelling of appointment. So appointment. Okay. Okay, appointment reason and make it a little bit smaller. Okay. 
tough thing. Now the re reason I uh, chose this one because it has uh, you know binding data. You you have seen uh, there are JavaScript, there is uh, SQL, and also function formula. But uh, here uh, you can see in the options we have one more thing is like UI, uh, which is very uh, straightforward actually. Uh, you just click on add. You click here. Okay, so what are the I want consultation. Okay. And click on save. So this is, has been added as a part of it. Also, you can simply write a JS, which I will prefer for this one to make it quick. Okay. Let's see. Save. Okay, saved. Appointment reason is there. Good. Now, doctor. Doctor also, same thing. Two doctors we have. Let's add the JS code of Dr. Smith and uh, Dr. Dr. Gupta, safe. So these are all the details we want from the user. Whoever comes to the clinic and want to make an appointment, we want all these details. Now, finally, we want a trigger. So for that trigger, we'll be, uh, button. We'll be using a button right here, I suppose. Maybe. Okay. Let's give it a name, submit. Let's add an icon. You can add icons to the button to create more effect. You can say, so select icon. Uh, that time we used calendar minus. Now let's use calendar plus. Okay, so we are adding a new appointment cross. Good. Okay. Now, what else? Button control. Now in the button control, we will be adding uh, events for button on button click. So the first thing, uh, of course, we want to send it to our uh, configured back uh, our database. But uh, before that, you you remember that uh, while we were doing get all, we did some transformation. Now here also the appointment and the appointment date which we are getting from uh, control. I'll show you actually. It's actually in an uh, Unix format. So we need to do some changes on that there too. Okay. So let's do JS. Okay, we'll be using a JS code editor. Uh, JS code, okay, so what do I want here? App date. So we want app date. App date. Okay, so this is my first variable, which uh, I will be making some changes to. I'm oh, sorry. I don't want to ask anything. And then I have app time. Appointment time, that's the appointment time. Okay, that's also in another format. Uh, and finally, DOB. That's the database. So DOB. It's coming from the DOB field itself. So well and good. Now, we have three variables. And simply we'll write the JavaScript. Uh, using moment.js, which is right here. So we have a constant app date and using moment of the app.date and using it to format into yyyymmdd format. So you can uh, like make tweaks with the format. You can go to the official website and check what else format you can do, how um, else you can make changes to it. Now, uh, next is to present it as an output. Now, of course we want it as an output. So let's do a test script. Now, these all are data in these all variables. And this is the final output, which I'm getting, which is my desired uh, format. Okay, cool. Continue. Now I, I need to save this, right? So I have a data uh, appointment date. Time. I think uh, this must just very much uh, like very much straightforward. Uh, in case if you have any doubt, just drop it in the chat. I'll look at it. Okay. Now I got all the details. Fine. Last step, very last step. Let's do, you can say again, clinic. Welcome back to our database. 
add a query again i need a database query so what it will be insert data so let me fetch the team okay okay so we will take few seconds to understand this uh at the first glance you can understand that there are many variables so all these variables are connected to their respective attributes or you can say they should be columns so for name we have name variables and all the other details okay so let's try this i mean okay so address let's say south park appointment date now let's do this to what is today's date Uh, just checking whether I'm writing in the right format or not. Yes, it's good. good. Okay. Appointment notes, done. Appointment reason. So what all reason we have? I think let's take with the chronic. Appointment status schedule. Uh, let's say schedule. Appointment time. 18 uh, 24 hours i'm providing so i go doctor smith now let's go with dr Gupta. okay get a birth i think that's really good email at the gmail.com I'm just uh, putting up some dummy values just to showcase whether it's working or not. And we will be able to see this in the preview itself. So not to worry there. There it Let's do a test query. Awesome. Insert it at the ID number 57. That's great. Let's see whether it's really there. Okay. Uh, yes, Dale Tom. We have South Park from South Park Mail. Awesome. Save it. Now what will happen? Now what will happen? The next step is very much forward. Whatever details I'm getting from our controls. So we have our text input controls and everything. All the details are saved in their own uh, respective variables. So we will use those uh, keywords to insert in our database. How we'll do that? Very simple. Address, you can add, come here, click on here, write address. That's it. Appointment date. Now, appointment date, if you remember, we are using it from our action output. This JS code, right? So JS code action output. This is an action. This is an action output. And under JS code, we have appointment date. Awesome. So this is the code. Okay. So I'm thinking to write it. Uh, appointment reason. I think that's good appointment status not status if you have uh, i don't know if you have noticed or not but uh, i haven't written anywhere appointment status i think yes uh, let's see reason is there but not status because of course this is the first time it will be scheduled so let's schedule uh, this is the this is the only static static data which i want to be sent uh, to my db so scheduled well and good appointment time this code dot app time awesome so it's showing 1434 which is light here okay doctor i mean uh this code dot uv mail id gender name Continue. Finish. That's done. Yes, absolutely. So what next? I mean, uh, actually, the the insertion part is done. So next, we want some kind of you know confirmation. So what I'll do, I'll do a quick toast. Uh, what we have done earlier for the delete one. So success, perfect. Uh, appointment scheduled. 
okay appointment scheduled right okay now setting continue finish now next what next i want to refresh get all again so what i'll do i'll run database because uh, once you insert once you delete as well as insert or whatever you do with the database you you need to fetch the uh, you know the latest uh, updation so i'll do the get all and click on continue finish and finally navigate back navigate back to our calendar screen oh god i so wish i think it will be I think it will have for it will. So let's get back to our ground zero, the first uh, uh, screen, and do a preview. So, what do we have here? First thing first, we have here, uh, if you have remember, I have mentioned Dr. Gupta over uh, Dale Tom. So, there we have with uh, Dale Tom, and it has this appointment timing and appointment reason as well. Okay, so Dale Tom, you uh, leave for now. Okay, tell Tom as uh, the appointment has been deleted. Next, where do I want to? I think someone should have an appointment for let's say third. So go here. Uh, okay, let's let me go there. Uh, okay, not exactly, but. Let's actually go behind. Okay. Everything is need to be picked. Done. Mail. Okay. Appointment date. So here I will be choosing uh, next month, uh, 4th. Okay. This should work. Appointment time. It's 7.31 here. So that's make it uh, 6.31, done. Consultation, Dr. Smith. Let's do, let's do and let's check. Awesome. So guys, you can see that in front of my screen, just within a few seconds, uh, Everything has changed, like the layout, the insertion, the whole database has been changed, the front end has been changed, and everything is created. Awesome. So what's the next part? I mean, it's actually uh, next is with our analysis system. Now, if you have uh, remembered, Alejandro was speaking about column two. So what uh, I'm going to put here is that uh, in front of me, I have already two charts prepared for you to make give you a basic understanding that what is happening and uh, why it is there. So to understand a basic under, uh, criteria that at which time frame people are uh, most appointed or scheduled for, or to understand the number of people, uh, percent of people who are uh, coming up for consultation or follow up or preventive and cloning. So these two data uh, are uh, like or based on the 45 details which i provided just now and this is real time data of course and uh, whatever the changes is happening in the database it's show, uh, reflecting here right now right away on every run query but here in this particular container i will be using a new chart let me show you how to configure chart and it's very simple i like to be very honest it's very simple uh it's with just a very few clicks you just have to match, uh, match few right uh, pointers and then you will have it but 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 here i will be using different table now you remember the table of column store with the 4 million plus data now we will see whether this particular chart will be able to show us exact analytic report of those 4 million data so what do we want to see ah uh, let's go here data quick select Connector query. So uh, this is the DB, and here I want to get the uh, appointment analytics for bar chart, and it will be uh, I think about status only. Now it is the query. So, I mean, 
I don't know about you guys whether you remember from uh, whether you remembered the query or not, but I did my research and I do remember the query. Uh, let me just show it here. Analytics dot appointment. You can see right here. So we are using actually column store, and here what things we are uh, trying to achieve is that first we want the doctor names then we want the number of app statuses so uh, which doctor has completed how, how many numbers of completed schedules you say or let's say uh, someone are pendings so let's do a test let's see what comes what comes awesome i mean it's already been shown uh, I mean, uh, from by Alejandro that uh, where a normal query was taking three to uh, four seconds, it just took a one second to for uh, column store to showcase the data. So you can see there are J, a name Jane, 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 and they are categorized on their statuses. So canceled, completed, no show scheduled. And also there is a count for them. I mean, okay, so Jane has completed. Oh my God, that's a 10. That's a very huge number. So what we'll do, let's just save for now. And uh, let's see, let's see, let's see. I'm pretty sure that the chart will not show me anything because uh, it will show me as per the calendar view only. So let's cross it here. Okay, please select X axis column, Y axis column from properties. Before that, you have these three attributes, okay? Name, appointment status, and count. So what I'll do, I'll go to properties. I'll come here under data, under UI form. We also have Plotly JSON. Uh, it is totally like powered by Plotly. If you are very well uh, versed with Plotly and you know your uh, way around how to provide exact details in the X and Y axis and everything, you are free to use. But here I'll use simple, uh, like, you know, just a quick way. First select bar chart. Okay. X axis. On the X axis, what do I want? I want to see name of the doctors. Okay. Name. Nothing. Okay. Y axis. On the Y axis, what do I want? I want counts. Like how many counts are there? Okay. So this looks a bit weird. So I will do an aggregation or a group by group by status. Now that's a, uh, like seem much more understandable. Like, okay, this is the done. Uh, this is the completed status. So this much uh, Jane has completed. This much is canceled. This much is no show. And this is scheduled. Okay. Good. So yes, guys, uh, with this, I think these are all our important screen. Now the final screen I will show you. Uh, before that, let me see whether I'm missing anything or not. I guess not. Uh... Let me check. Okay. So this is my final screen. This is just a tray menu. And uh, yes, you have different options. And I will tell you why I'm using this particular, uh, you know, me menu part. Like we have options for screen, pop up, menu, tray, header, and footer. The reason behind is that uh, this is a collapsible menu, which I want to use as a way of navigation. So in the event of collapsible menu, I have used a simple branch, uh, which on click will use uh, whether the value given by the collapsible menu is report, then okay, navigate to report part. That's it, nothing much. But the very essence of using uh, this particular tree, uh, menu is that if I go to this calendar partner, uh, and this is the screen property, right? And here you can see sticky menu screen. Uh, I don't know if you guys, see. yes, here's sticky menu screen. So if I just click here, click on menu five, see, that's good. It's just right there. And uh, uh, we want more can screen open so we refresh your logos. Okay. So I'm refreshing the variable just uh, like whenever the screen opens uh, without any uh, like delay, just refresh the variable or the run, rerun the data query so that you can see the latest data. Okay. One more place analysis. well well uh let's preview i think yes that's it that's it okay so we have this layout in front of us where we have inserted new data right at the fourth of 
January 2024, the upcoming year, of course, and appointment reports. And if I click here, all these data, uh, okay, so I think, uh, yes, it, the refresh is not given for that particular one. But uh, yes, you can see all the uh, appointment reports are there. So we have the time frame and here, and if I just click back here, awesome. So uh, if you remember the, before we go to the full publishing part and making it live, there was this 30 minutes span, like for the uh, transformation part where I mentioned that I have adding 30 minutes. Now, why is that for? So if I just go a week, uh, this month and if I do let's say weekly yes you see the steps each steps is of 30 minutes yes absolutely right so if you have mentioned the particular hour time frame also you will be able to see in our control uh, calendar control uh, which I think which, which is pretty awesome to understand like which is overlapping with uh, which appointment itself okay I guess with this, I uh, we come to our final step, which is publish. Now publishing this app, you can think it as like a milestone, which you have completed. And this milestone needs to be saved somewhere. So it will be saved as a 0.01 .01 version, which uh, let's say Bharat Clinic ST publish. Now publishing this app will uh, eventually open up some more doors. I will show you just a minute. It will take a few seconds. I will show you what uh, publishing can help us to do. Awesome. Now pub with publishing, if I just click on share, I have all these options enabled. So you can share it with your users or with an organization access and use it as a public URL. I mean, this is actually very useful to, you know, uh, for embed purposes and, and uh, much more like if you have your own website and you want to integrate this particular application in your whole website or somewhere in the website, you can use embed configurations and much more. So let's see, copy. I'm actually in my private browsing. This is a public URL, which I'm trying to, you know, uh, open. Let's see whether it gives me the, my app or not. Yes, we have awesome. I mean, uh, that's it. I mean, if, if I just share this link with Alejandro, I think he, he will be able to, uh, insert a new appointment too. That's it guys. Okay. Awesome. So. That was it for the whole uh, building of our application We're using Drona HQ on top of MariaDB, how to create the whole calendar view appointment application. And we have seen so many things like uh, from running a query and then simple English of endo as well as column store. So yeah. Uh, Alejandro, where are you? Okay, so I think uh, I'm here. Alejandro. I'm here. Yeah. Yeah. So did you do you get did you see uh, like the full process? How was it like? I think if I share the link app with you, you will be able to you know uh, create a new appointment and maybe people who are there today with us will able to you know create their own and understand that how the DB is actually working and will help them to build their own applications, right? Yeah, correct. Yeah, the application is now deployed and published. So anybody with the URL would be able to to use it and store the, the data in MariaDB. I just wanted to, to just uh, highlight something that yeah, um, with uh, with MariaDB, you, you can store both operational data. So to insert data and also to run analytics in the in the same server if you want. Right in different Absolutely. servers through replication. There are so many possibilities. The important bit here is that um, you have that possibility. So I was, yes. unfortunately, I, I I was trying to replicate this exercise right now. That's where I was a bit busy with, uh, or slow with my microphone and camera uh, to calculate how many appointment rows a clinic with say 10 buildings operating from Monday to Friday. So not even the Saturdays or, or weekends in general. Um, with an average, you know, number of days per year, 
and it it like in the five less than five years you get millions of rows. Yes, absolutely. Right. <laughs> so I this mean, is a, a this is real. Portal, it could yes. happen. Yeah. So this, absolutely. This is a, and we just used it here, and um, yes, and, well, simulated and simplified in a in a way, but. Uh, using numbers that are not that crazy. And with MariaDB, with Column Store, you can uh, rest assured that the reports are going to be super fast, right. that the, uh, if you use MariaDB Enterprise, the database is going to be uh, up and running all the time. If one node fails, another one, it's going to be ready for you with all the uh, data up to date and can start receiving inserts, updates, deletes, and reads, and everything. Um, so it was pretty cool to see how uh, Drone HQ also allows you to to very quickly build a full UI on top of uh, any kind of database, not only MariaDB, and right. that you can uh, process the data. But as we said before, don't process don't process the data there. Do it in the SQL query. You have it there, so you better use all the full power of the database, which are really um, big systems with tons of functionality, which are going to operate much faster than any script and JavaScript or any other right. program on the data. Um, so very interesting and, and uh, looking forward to uh, to another uh, um, presentation where we can find some more function, we show more functionality of these two amazing technologies. Yes, and likewise, I mean, absolutely. Like the very, uh, guys, the very essence of this whole webinar is uh, like to dedicate you to how things are available as an option you can use like whether it's a uh, millions of data or just a fraction of data it's just options available to you guys and uh, we have creative layouts using drone hq to able to help you understand that uh, how you want to showcase the data you want different colors you want a quick visibility you uh, because putting up the data in the back end and as well as showcasing it at that moment is what creates the difference right so yes, that was a great uh, interactive session. I must believe since you were doing, so it is an interactive session and I believe that people will be able to understand much more things from this. So, okay, so in case if anyone has any comments or any queries, just throw to us, then we can conclude this call like this. So someone is asking, I wanted to know is can we add permissions? So, so can we add permissions uh, to admins can see all appointments and practitioners can see just this. Yes, absolutely. I mean, uh, and the, uh, if you are looking for a front end part of it and you have ad access to on an organization, I was just sharing with you, right. That, uh, you can give access to an organization, but there is a, uh, whole sets of administration. Like you can give it a view role. You can give it an edit role. You can uh, just like uh, uh, Drake is someone is asking that uh, if they can uh, have different for the admins as well as for the practitioners. Yes, absolutely. That can be done. Just depends on how you navigate through each page. So what I can do, like if I'm embedding the app in my own platform and on embedding, if I'm doing a login, let's say I go login and I'm getting a name, let's say Shibam. And if I check in the database, the Shibam is a part of an admin. So it will redirect me to that particular page, which will have that particular insert uh insert and delete functionality but if it's saying no it's not a shiba it's a people from outside the organization or outside uh practitioners or someone so it will redirect to someone who will just be able to see the calendar view will not able to access uh any of the interactive right? just to understand that when the doctor is available or not so yes this all possibilities are done you just have to uh, understand the whole routing area how the in, uh, integrations are done how the automations are flowing everything are, it's just seamless Yes, uh, any more questions, just throw it. Okay, I think that would be all. Ayandur, you have any questions or we can just conclude the call then? Um, I actually, I was, I, have a, I was trying to find this or I couldn't find it quickly. Is there any functionality to manage like um, multi-tenancy setups? Sorry, uh, can you just uh, repeat? I didn't get you. Uh, no, I was just wondering if there is a functionality to handle uh, multi-tenancy. So let's say I have this app and it's actually working pretty well and my users like it. And now there is another entity who wants to use this app. 
and I don't want to deploy it again somewhere else. So I would I would do something like a multi-tenancy uh, configuration. I mean, I bet it's uh, it's possible through, for example, adding uh, filters in the queries and this kind of, of of things. But I was wondering if there was any additional features for that. Yes, absolutely. I mean, uh, one thing you have just mentioned the embed part that is good. Uh, Another way which we can break it down to very, you know, uh, crux of it is through its environment. Now, uh, people uh, who are fully fledged, uh, if they want to produce, to produce a whole application, they can define their own environment, whether it is a testing environment, production environment, and even a low, uh, you know, local platform, on-premise environment. So on that granular level also, people can, you know, create their whole different configuration. I mean, MariaDB will have different configuration for a single account in a single account will have different configuration for internet for different environments. So if I'm using a single connector, I will have different uh, configuration details for different. If I'm using an on-prem, I will be using an on-prem environment, but it will yeah. be on a single account itself. So I think yeah, uh, that's what you wanted to ask, right? Yeah. yeah. Cool. Okay. All right. Yeah, yeah. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you guys uh, for joining today. And thank you so much, Andrew for this wonderful uh, webinar. Of course, you shared so much knowledge. And uh, yes, looking forward to much more collabs and more events together. Thank you, guys. Likewise, thank you, so thank you for having me. And thank you, everybody, for joining. Bye-bye.